For the new Jeep Wrangler and the new Ram 1500, FCA cooked up a new mild hybrid system that has some people a little bit confused. So let's dive into eTorque and talk about what it is, what it isn't, and why you might want it, and of course, why you might not. First, let's talk about what eTorque isn't. eTorque is not a full hybrid system. Generally speaking, hybrids fall into two categories. We have mild hybrids and full hybrids. Full hybrids are cars like a Prius or a Chrysler Pacifica hybrid, which drive along using just the electric motor. Mild hybrids would be vehicles that cannot drive themselves along the road using just electricity, and that's where e-torque falls. The heart of the e-torque hybrid system is a motor generator unit. Instead of using a pancake motor between the engine and transmission, FCA opted for a belt-connected unit. This is a little bit less expensive. It also makes it a little bit easier to maintain should you ever need to do so. On the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 engine, this motor generator unit sits on top of the engine in place of the standard alternator, and it's an air-cooled unit. On the 3.6 liter V6 in the Ram 1500, it's mounted on the front of the engine, and it's liquid-cooled. On the 2 liter turbo in the Wrangler, it's off to the side, more like a traditional alternator, because that engine was designed with the e-torque assist system from the start. The motor generator unit operates on 48 volts instead of the traditional 12 volt systems that we find in most cars. This allows the same amount of power to be delivered with thinner and lighter cables than a traditional 12 volt system, while being safer than the hybrid systems that we see in full hybrids, which generally operate on several hundred volts. The engine management system uses this motor generator unit to do a few things. First, it generates electricity to charge the 48 volt lithium ion battery pack and power the 12 volt system in the vehicle and charge the 12 volt battery pack. As we see in most hybrid vehicles, eTorque still uses two different batteries. We have the hybrid battery pack and then we have a standard lead acid battery pack that powers the 12 volt systems. At the moment in eTorque equipped vehicles, all the accessories still operate on 12 volts. So the radio, the window switches, etc., everything like that still operates on 12 volts. Instead of drawing power all the time from the engine like a regular alternator, this system can essentially disconnect itself when the engine is under heavy load. That means it's not sapping power and you get all of that engine power to accelerate. When braking, it can actually be more aggressive at power generation, and that gives you basically a mild form of regenerative braking and helps top up the battery in those moments. This improves efficiency because if you're in slow and go traffic while you're accelerating, it will stop generating power, and then while you're decelerating in that traffic situation, it'll regenerate power back into the battery and therefore save some gas. Keeping the engine off at a stoplight is one of the key ways that hybrids save fuel. Now the motor generator unit does not replace the traditional starter at the moment. FCA says that they have retained it in all of these engines for now because it has better cold start characteristics. So the first time you turn on your engine, the e-torque system does not start it. The traditional starter kicks in and then the rest of the drive cycle is when the motor generator unit is starting and stopping the engine for you. Perhaps adding to the confusion a little bit, FCA also has a 3.6 liter V6 engine with a traditional start-stop system, but that's different because it just uses the regular 12 volt battery pack and basically a beefier starter motor, but that's not what's happening in the e-torque system. Because the e-torque system uses that larger motor generator unit for torque fill. This is when the motor is assisting the engine, but this only happens at certain speeds and that's important to keep in mind. E-torque does most of its work between 0 and about 1500 RPM. The motors themselves can deliver 70 pound-feet of torque on the 2 liter engine, 90 pound-feet of torque on the 3.6, and 130 pound-feet of torque on the 5.7 liter Hemi. But unlike a full hybrid, these motors don't add anything at higher engine RPMs, so it doesn't alter the peak torque, though it does change the torque curve. In the 5.7 liter Hemi, the 410 pound-foot maximum happens when the engine alone reaches 3,950 RPM, and by that time, the motor has stopped assisting. However, from 0 RPM to say 1500 RPM, the torque curve is altered and we actually produce more torque than the 5.7 liter Hemi would be able to on its own because we get that 130 pound-feet of torque almost at 0 RPM on up to when the engine starts taking over. In addition to helping start and stop the engine, the motor can also be used to expand the amount of time that the engine can stay in its fuel cutoff mode while decelerating and the amount of time it can spend in its cylinder deactivation mode because it can add a little bit of torque at those low RPMs when it's needed. We've also been told that the motor will be used to help smooth out torque delivery during transmission shifts, but the main benefit to you as a consumer would be the additional torque at those low RPMs and the start-stop ability of the engine. However, you should know that if you live in a hotter climate, you won't be saving as much gasoline as if you lived in a place like Seattle. 
because for now, the eTorque system does not add an electric air conditioning system. So the engine has to stay running in order to cool the cabin in those hotter climates. Depending on your climate and your driving style, you could expect to improve your fuel economy by perhaps 10 or 15 percent, but obviously that will vary greatly. The downside to a system like this would be some increased complexity, although hybrid battery packs have proved very reliable, and the increased serpentine belt wear, because the system does use that wide belt to connect the motor generator to the engine. And lastly, although nobody is talking about this directly, one of the big reasons that eTorque exists is because of corporate average fuel economy requirements in the United States. Engine start-stop systems have a noticeable impact on the EPA City fuel economy score because of the amount of time that the engine is idling in that testing cycle. That is obviously one of the reasons that we see it on modern vehicles. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you want to know what's going on under the skin of the 2019 Ram 1500 pickup truck, there's a video on our channel about that as well. In addition to that, you should see the first drive review of the 2019 Ram pickup truck coming up on our channel about a day or two after this video. I'll see you next week.